I've been using geometry nodes for about three years now. And back when it first came out, there were no courses. There were a lot of Reddit posts. There were a lot of little videos here and there. Um, so I had to figure out how to learn it. After a lot of trial and error, I figured out a way of guiding my research that really made a huge difference in me learning the tool and feeling comfortable in the tool. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys my frame of thought when I was learning geometry nodes, and we're gonna use that frame of thought to build this animation right here, piece by piece in geometry nodes. So here's the concept. At the basic level, I look at geometry nodes as a way to replace tools and processes that we've been doing in Blender for years, but now we can do it procedurally, which gives us a lot more power and a lot more animatable things. Tools and processes like deleting faces, um, insetting faces, wireframe modifiers, solidify modifiers, subdivision surface, remaking modifiers and remaking processes. How do you do that in geometry nodes? And that's what helped me guide my research. So rather than Googling, what does the geometry proximity node do? Rather, I would Google how to create proximity effects in geometry nodes and use the resources that already existed on the internet and copied those and eventually understood those nodes. I then started to look at tools and processes as formulas, and I needed to find the formula to a wireframe, find the formula to proximity effects. And once you get those formulas down, you then actually start to understand what you're doing. Now, I just launched a course where the first half of the course is entirely taught with that frame of thinking, looking at geometry nodes as a way to replace processes and modifiers and tons of things like that to actually get you to understand what geometry nodes does. It's a five and a half hour course that's split in half where the first half again is looking at it as formulas and replacing tools. And the second half was we're gonna take everything that we learned and apply them to practical applications and making some really interesting, beautiful animations that you'll be able to take and do tons of different ideas with that training. I launched it a couple days ago and it'll be 25% off for the remainder of this month. If you want to check it out, you can use code NEWGEO. Now, with that being said, let's build this animation formula by formula so that we can start to look at it in that new frame of thought. So first step is always just get something here. Um, I always start with a plane and we can hop into geometry nodes, click new, and we're going to start off with an icosphere. And we'll make that our official first input. We'll give it a radius of three and a subdivision of five. And the first formula we're going to need is how do we displace a spherical object in geometry nodes? That would be the research. So in this case, this is the formula and let's go ahead and build that. So the set position node is always the starter that it's going to allow you to displace geometry. And in this case, we have to displace outward by the normal. So we are gonna need something to communicate the normal of this object to work with the displacement. So what we're gonna need is a, a vector math so that we can multiply the normal and the texture that we're gonna to use to displace the objects. The normal is going to allow us to displace it outward, otherwise it's just, it's not going to work. So we'll plug the normal into the vector, we'll plug color into the other vector, and we'll throw it right into the offset, and we now have this, and then we'll bring our scale to whatever we want, and we now have displacement. And then the last portion is how can we adjust the scale. We'll just get another multiply node and do that. And what we have now, is the first formula. This is the formula to displace a spherical object. So now we have this ready to go and we can do lots of cool stuff with it. Now, now what I wanna do is to make all of these faces circular. In this case, we can't do it circular, but we can do it hexa hexagonal. I think that's the right word, hexagonal. And that's gonna be with a single node, and this is sort of like a, a, a single node formula a dual mesh. So if we throw the dual mesh right here, it's gonna make those faces hexagonal, which means once we subdivide them, they'll get spherical and that's kind of the idea we want here. And so that is just a simple single node formula to get sort of circular or close to circular faces. Now here's a tricky one. What I wanna do is inset all of these faces and then delete the face in the middle. Now, the old way to do that would be Go to edit mode, hit I twice, inset, hit X, and then you'll delete those faces. Of course, 
We can do it in geometry nodes, but completely procedural and we don't have to do any destructive modeling. So the, the frame of research would first be how to inset faces and then how to delete insetted faces, essentially. So this is the formula and let me show you how it works. We're first gonna wanna get a extrude mesh node and then just bring that extrusion to a zero. Now we need to get a scale elements node and put it here. And what I know is this top socket, of course, understanding this node is gonna come from using them and looking at the Blender manual, um, but specifically with this, this top socket represents the node, the, the faces that are getting pushed up. And so what we can do is select those. So I can just plug top right into selection. I only want to scale in that new, essentially that new face. If we go to wireframe, we can kind of see what's going on. If we now scale it in, you can see, you can kind of see, it's hard to tell, but we'll, it'll be more obvious later. But we're now able to inset that face that was originally extruding out, but we can now just kind of bring it in because we were able to select it from the extrude mesh node. Now the last thing, now the, now the last portion of this formula is deleting that insetted face. And that's pretty simple because we know we have access to that face through this little um, pink icon. And so let's get a delete geometry node, go to face and say these faces, and there we go. We now have the ability to scale and inset this face and also delete that specific insetted face. And so that is a new formula that is part of this. Now I wanna recreate a modifier. I wanna recreate the solidify modifier and that the language there would be how to extrude or how to solidify in geometry nodes. And this is another single node formula. This would be of course the extrude mesh node. And you can see how it's individually extruding every uh, you know individual face. I'm just gonna uncheck individual and we can see this. So now we can just extrude it out a little bit and we can get a subdivision surface node. And we now have kind of circular, well, they're definitely circular, more of an oval, but we now have those circular faces that I wanted in my animation and now we have this and then we can add a set shade smooth node uh, to smooth it out. But we now have this, it looks cool, it looks awesome. Um, I'm gonna bring my level back to zero to keep it light and now what I wanna do is in these empty portions have a cylinder that's kind of shooting out of them. So that would be sort of the old language would be a particle system, how we're creating particle systems um, and I want to put them on each of these faces. Now, with a little bit of experience in geometry nodes, a face can be turned into a point. So I wanna instance on those points. This is less of the sort of formula E language. So let's just build that out. We're gonna instance on points. So we're gonna use the um, mesh information from the first extrude mesh node and we'll get a join geometry node and we'll plug it here. Next thing I wanna do is tell it specifically where to instance. So we'll use this top socket to say only instance there and then we'll get a our cylinder and we'll plug it here so if I go ahead and I bring my depth down definitely need to bring that radius significantly far down uh, but what we're going to notice is they're instancing circularly so the face that is missing has a point each and it's, it's instancing them on those points rather than the single face point in the middle. So we can kind of force it to recognize only the face or we can tell it where to instance, which is only one cylinder right here in the middle with a, a mesh to points node. And what this new node is going to allow is this little dialog to say only on the face. So you can see where it's switched. Now they're only going in the face. So now what I want to do is get all of these cylinders to point outward rather than, you know, going left, right, up, down. So they need to be able to have the normal information. So what I wanna do, we're gonna get a align rotation to vector node and we need to get a normal node. So if we plug normal into vector and then we plug this into here, it should get them all to point outward and it's not. And I, I knew it was going to do that. So like I mentioned, 
cre recreating tools like particle systems, like Solidify, like Wireframe. That's a collection of nodes, which I look at as formulas to make things, but also problems in geometry nodes require formulas as well. And the formula that I'm going to need here is fixing the normal. Because the problem is, if I go ahead and mute this mesh to points node, the cylinders start to work. They do point outward. This mesh to points node essentially kills our normal and allows this node to no longer be able to recognize the proper normal to get all of the cylinders to point outward. It broke it right here, which means we need to find a way to get the unbroken normal to feed into here. So how can we fix the normal when you add a mesh to points node? Well, you can use attributes, pull them from other portions of the node tree and essentially send them over to a different part of the node tree where you otherwise couldn't use that particular attribute. Now, here's how it works. We're gonna get a capture attribute node and then it is gonna capture a moment right here. And the moment we wanna capture is the normal node. So now we now have a brand new normal socket right here that we can send anywhere. So this is now a new formula and I would title it fixed normal. And then now what we can do is take this brand new normal socket and plug it right here into the vector and we now have cylinders that are actually formatted properly. And this is what we want. So that would be a fix, a, a, a fix formula, fixing the normal. Another formula would be how do we get them to extrude outward? That'd be kind of a two node formula, which is normal node align rotation to vector to get them all to point out properly. Last thing that I wanna do is randomly scale the cylinders going outward, and that needs to be randomly scaling these cylinders on their X. So that's gonna require a couple nodes. So this would be the formula to randomly scale these cylinders on only the X. First node we're gonna to need to get is a combine X, Y, Z, so that we can actually simply plug it into the, uh, actually, sorry, the Z. So we're gonna plug that into the scale and we're gonna just X and Y bring them back to one and then we can have access to the Z. Let's go ahead and get a noise texture and a map range to control how this is going to look. So let's plug factor into value, plug result into uh, the Z. So now we can start to goof around with this. So the max, we can bring that in. We can bring the scale down to a point nine, and then I just want to sort of exaggerate what's going on here. So we can just kind of bring them in like this until we just have random ones shooting out. Like so. And then if you want to bring this over to 4D, you can now animate. So let's go ahead and bring our subdivision surface over to two so that we can look at this kind of as a final look. So this is our final look, building this thing out completely procedurally. Uh, I'm gonna leave the materials and the lighting up to you if you, just to have some fun with that. I would make sort of this main portion metallic. I would make these glass and just kind of have some simple uh, moody lighting for it. But that's how you build it. But that is how you can build out things and looking at all the processes formula by formula rather than looking at it as just this big, just crazy collection of nodes that doesn't really make sense visually. If you can sort of break them up and looking at, looking at them as formulas and if you don't know how to do a particular formula, you can use that to guide how you sort of look at the research of it. I hope you learned something. Again, if you wanna check out my new Geometry Nodes course and you are just in your beginning learning how to use the tool, it's a perfect course for that. You can get it 25% off, again, with this code for the rest of this month. Uh, but with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I hope you learned something.